I, I'm in quarantine with the second R in RHR. It's Mike Ross. How are you, Mike? Oh, I'm good. It's nice to see you. It's nice to see you too. We've not met before. We have So not. lockdown has brought us together. Yep. It's not all bad. Now, according to Kerrang, Mike Ross is burnt in blues and soaked in soul. You heard that? Did you read that? Yeah. yeah. Very uh, nice. Yeah, that quote's been around for a little while. It's nice. Yeah, it kind of sums me up. Yeah, burnt in blues. I've known not not an, an expression or phrase I've ever used before, but I wish I had. It conjures yeah. up a very very nice image. Yeah, so, I mean, it's kind of true because it's you know, I'm not. Don't tell the blues people that pay me to play for them, but I'm not really like a blues musician. I play bluesy music you know yeah but um but like warren haynes or or, or goodman mule they play bluesy music but they're not like a blues band mm. in, particularly in england you know the the blues bands are all a bit rumpy pompy mm. uh, like old guys you know but but um but burns yeah because yeah, it's kind of burning you know a very intense kind of artist went particularly performance you know yeah so burning yeah it's burning i'm on fire <laughs> brilliant glad to hear it um, well, we've got a lot to talk about. Mm. Not only are you going on tour tomorrow. That's right. Um, but you've got a new album coming out on the 30th of October. Yeah. And it is your fourth solo album. It's also um, the sequel to your previous album. Mm -hmm. So it's called The Clovis Limit Part 2. Sequel to the Part 1, obviously, which was the Nashville recorded album. So why don't you tell us a bit about this? I know it's got 10 tracks on it. So yeah. how does it compare to the Part 1? um well i mean the the reason that they're connected is that they the, the majority of the songs came from the sort of the same pool so i wrote them around the same sort of time mm. and so my 2016 album jenny's place which was actually written and recorded in 2015 mm. uh, that came out and then i spent you know like the next that 18 month period touring kind of relentlessly and everywhere I went with you know all over the world with my phone I was writing lyrics and playing bits of guitar into the phone in hotel rooms and in the back of the van and you know everywhere I went and then um and then I kind of snipped them up and sellotaped them back together on, on digitally and then kind of made made backing tracks out of them and then took them all off to to Sweden my wife's Swedish so I went out with Sweden and and i sort of finished them all off there some mm. of them some of them i call it beaming down so i get a song and 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 it, i just sit down and i get an idea and then suddenly it's kind of finished you know and, yeah. and i get a few of those but some but with this one there was more of like collating my thoughts you know and and, and there's a lot of stuff went on in 2016 you know we had the brexit vote donald trump got elected mm. There's a, there's a lot of negativity and although what I've written doesn't it isn't explicit about that there's a lot of frustration in some of the mm. songs and, and sadness as well you know and anger between November 2018 and then December of get this right last year mm. uh, three albums <laughs> two with RHR one solo album I toured about the 14 different countries did like 70 shows or something like that and then and then I gave myself a holiday last December. I thought I'll have a little bit of a break. So I didn't book <laughs> gigs from December, like 12th to December or something. And then, and then it was all just picking up again mm. when the lockdown happened, really. Yeah. Not my work. But the, the Clovis 2 was finished off in, in about 10 days in the middle of last summer. So in between tours, I went out and came back and then just I have... It, oh, and the moved house in that period. Is... <laughs> the most stressful thing you can do, yeah. probably. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the, one of the things that was good is that I, I have a studio now. In, like, yeah. This is at the bottom of my garden. So this was the first time, compared to Jenny's Place, compared to um, anything else I'd done, kind of mm. up, the, up to Mahogany Drift. Some of Mahogany Drift was recorded at my old house. But, right. um, but this time... I was able to do stuff that I've never been able to afford to do before because yeah. I was 250 quid a day studio fees. Whereas, I mean, you can't see it here, but there's like six vintage amps, there's organ, Leslie speakers, a whole yeah. studio stuff. 
so I was able to, and I'd learned a lot along the way. So here it was like, right, I can finally capture all of these guitar sounds that I'd that I'd that I'd heard or I was able to do live, but I'd never been able to get on a record. So Clovis Two um, is is kind of the it's kind of the sum of it so far. So it's in theme, it's a bit similar to Clovis One. Mm. In feel, it's a bit similar to Mahogany Drift. Mm. Uh, other stuff going on as well um but yeah i mean in terms of and i'm i probably say this every time i make a record but it's definitely the best thing i've ever done well, i've got to ask you what is the clovis limit well um uh it, it can't it, it, i'm a i am I love sci-fi there's a sci-fi sci-fi influence in in clovis too anyway okay yeah i've got it i've got a copy here you can see that the, the oh, is this where the space rock comes into it? Well, yeah, well, that was something else. That was the space <laughs> extravaganza. Let's not go there. That's All right, right, we won't mix things up then. Yeah. So, go on, tell me about the Clovis Limit. So the Clovis Limit. Uh, there's a book by the. There's a, an American writer called William Gibson who he wrote. Um, well, he he and he's the guy that they say invented the Matrix. Okay. He had a book called The New Romancer, not New Romancer but Neuromancer um, in the 80s. Oh, and it's actually the series of three books um, where he is inventing this world where everybody logs on and they live lives inside this, inside the Matrix. He doesn't call it that, but that's where they get the info. So anyway, yeah. let's fast forward. There's a book he brought out in maybe 2016 called The Periphery. And, and, it's, and in that book, they're in some far-flung future and uh, they have this method of dipping back in time to different alternate pasts. Okay. Really. I think I've seen something like this on Red Dwarf. Well, yeah, you know, it's that kind of thing. So you reach back and then, yeah. but what they do is they call them stubs. So they're not real. They, they don't affect the future because they're alternate. Okay. So they're, they're in like, I don't know, 24, 25th, 20, 25th century, whatever. I don't even know. But they go back to like, an alternate future where Brexit was different and where uh, Trump didn't get in. And, but okay. there's still an almost extinction level event because of nuclear stuff and all that. And the other. But anyway, in that, one of the main characters in the peripheral is, uh, a, a, is a lady called Clovis. And she is in this alternate version of London. She runs a shop called the Clovis Limit. And it sells mm. Americana. So it sells, oh. it sells, and by Americana, like what we used to mean by Americana, like, you know, like this is Americana, a little Mexican. Yeah. Death school, yeah. Or, you know, like a Liberty Bell or a flag or something. And she yeah. said the, the banner on her shop is exclusively Americana. Okay. Uh, I got the idea from, but particularly like on the second half on this album I, I really went into that concept much further because what i'm tr i realized that there's a parallel between what i try and do with my music and so i will take a bit of a reality i mean you know i i like most music but i particularly like american music mm. be it Real chants from recorded on wire from the 1890s to uh, Hawaiian guitar players of, 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 the, of the, you know, like 1917 or whatever, yeah. to, to Lead Belly, to Neil Young, to Stacks, and to, uh, and then into, you know, heavier music, and then to Van Halen, and, and then into Guns N' Roses. And it's, and there's a thread, you see. Yeah. So I, what I wanted was to create like a kind of a universe where i can go between those where it makes sense talk about all the, the instruments mm -hmm. on this album yeah you, know, you are a multi-instrumentalist so did you play all of the uh instruments yourself it's or funny anybody else in um well the drums are all i have a um a long time collaborator and, and my regular kind of touring drummer darren darren lee and he played on uh jenny's place and he's played on the clovis too he, he was there when I'd done my little bits, because as I say, I recorded them all on the phone and then put them onto one of the, put them on the computer and, and kind of just played around with them 
and then and then I got him in to play along with them, and we did some more re-record and stuff. So he was mm. in on Clovis too more than anything. There's there's some really cool drums on their stuff, which is led, mm. you know, like unusual stuff where we've replaced the hi hats with the cowbell, just mm. because it makes us all play differently. Really, just all I want. I just made an album, and yeah. I made it using all of the resources that I had. Yeah. Um, and if that means I'm a multi-instrumentalist, then, then guilty is charged. Okay. Well, I want to wish you all the best for your tour because you're starting that tomorrow yeah. and you're going to the Czech Republic. Uh, just very quickly, is that a long tour, short tour? Are you going to be going to any other countries? Uh, it's 10 shows in 10 days, so oh. it's and gruelling. <laughs> you're going to need a good rest when you get back. Yeah, I, well, I'm probably not. Well, I'm probably going to have to get one because they mo just moved it onto the quarantine list. Oh, uh, yes, yeah. you'll be forced to have a rest. Fourteen days holiday. I'll be in here because the family won't want want to be. Uh, yeah. So, which is which is like which is fine, but I, I'll <laughs> but I'll put a little blow up mattress in here, you know. Yeah, it's all planned out. So it's just the Czech Republic, is it? You're going yeah. to. So I fly to Prague tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Then, so tomorrow afternoon, it's, it's a busy day actually. So I, my flight leaves about eight o'clock. Straight there, and then rehearsing in the afternoon. And then the first show is on Thursday. Which is my son's birthday, so first time I won't be at at, at home. Oh. But we're okay. He was he was totally fine with it because he got his present last week. Oh. So. There you go. <laughs> I'm fine. sure you'll bring him back another present, right? I don't know if you've ever spent any time on tour with the band, but you don't go anywhere, <laughs> you know, because you you get up in the morning and you go and get your you get up as late as you can, so you can sleep in but still get the breakfast, and then <laughs> and then you go back to bed for. A it bit. sounds like any holiday I've ever been on. Yeah, but I guess the last time I was there was in February, so it wasn't holiday weather. It was absolutely bloody freezing. So you, so you hang in a hotel as late as possible. So I, I, I'll be editing video and whatever what in the mornings. And then it's like we drive somewhere and get some lunch and then get to the hotel and then stand check, do the gig. So you never really, never really do any shopping or, or anything like that. You maybe see something at the airport. but You might get a marionette. Excuse at me. The airport. You'll probably get a marionette at the airport. They do. There's a lot of that bohemian glass, which. Yeah. Oh I yeah. I bought someone when when I was in Prague. Yes, it's broken now, but but it was yeah. beautiful at the time. Well, I think it's uh, it's a little, some of it looks a little old fashioned. The stuff that I saw, but then again, yeah. out of the way of places. Prague, Prague was great though. Hope to spend a bit more time in Prague this time. Okay. Well, I hope to see you once your album's out. And I expect a tour maybe next year. Yeah, well, I mean, we just announced yesterday. Um, I probably should have let you know, but um, we. So I'm, I'm going to do an album pre. I'm going to do an album launch um, on the 29th of October here in Brighton. So that's where yeah. I was rehearsing today with the band. We're going to do a, um, and, and this is the first time I've talked about it properly actually because i've just invented some more ideas for it but um so i'm going to have an augmented band uh, we i'm selling a, a package on my web store which involves a cd and some, some other merch and a ticket to the gig and then 30 people 25 people that buy tickets will go yeah. will be able to come to the actual show but we um i'm going to do a multimedia thing so instead of it just being a camera or three cameras or whatever on the band um there will be three cameras on the band but i've also got quite a lot of video that i've been making through lockdown videos for the songs and and other bits and pieces so we're going to do a really like a big more of a multimedia presentation so we'll do some songs play a bit of video i've got some other interview that i've been that I've done with another guy will carter so we're going to use bits of that and then really have like a, a a live thing with the band but then run some pre-recorded video so looking forward to doing that and then yet yeah, january maybe february you know touring notwithstanding troy and i um obviously troy is the the other r in in rhr um troy and i are talking about doing a tour together in february 
um, the brothers, because we've renamed it now Redfern Ross Hermanos or Redfern. Yes, I noticed that, yeah. Um, since Jack left, but we, we wanted to keep it because people we, were known under that name, you know. Yeah. So we're going to do the brothers tour in, okay. in hopefully February next year. I mean, yeah. you know, there's so much uncertainty at the moment about that. Yeah. But that's the idea, and that will be a tour in support of this record and his uh, as yet unfinished, but soon to be, kind of an, which I've probably just blown it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. I wish you all the best for the tour and for the album, and I look forward to seeing you next year. And if I don't see you on tour, I'll be seeing you at Love Rocks, because I know you're going to be appearing there. Yes, yeah, great. Yeah, I look forward to it. Well, thank Take you. Take care. Bye. Great chatting to you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.